Well, um, that's a long time ago. <laughs> I can't remember the details. I'm not even sure how we had an opening. I was a new chair of the English department. And I don't know whether Marge wrote me or called me or walked in off the street, but here she was, really, finishing up a degree, I think, in southern Mississippi. And she made quite an impression. She was young, attractive, energetic, um, full of fire and vinegar, all of which is still true, except perhaps for the young, and I would think that she's still youthful. And uh, she made quite an impression. We had, a good, uh, we had a good conversation, and I was getting ready to offer her the job. And she said, now, hold on just a minute. Let's go back to that salary business. <laughs> of course, even though in 1972, nobody at Mercer made very much money. I did manage to find a little bit extra so that we could get her, and she joined the English department. I asked her at the retirement uh, ceremony, when you came to Mercer, did you think, I'm coming in here, I'll be here five or six years, and..." Uh, move on somewhere else, or did you see this as somewhere that you would be permanently? And she said, oh, goodness, no, I just needed a job. <laughs> so, but it proved to be an awfully good hire. And at the same time, she and Peggy DuBose were very uh, good friends and worked in the same way. In fact, we often referred to Dale and Peggy and Marge as, as the triumvirate. And they, and, and if you know Peggy, who, who is of course still around, although she's retired now, then that was a very powerful trio who got a great deal done. Marge just brought an enormous energy and zeal to the work that was going on uh, in the library and uh, with the resources, with the Academic Resource Center, with all, all of those things. She, she was a real dynamo, whatever it was that she was doing. <laughs> you know, the, the central thing about Marge yeah. is that she is a gadfly. And you had better not be complacent if you're going to work with Marge. Uh, the nature of the gadfly is to discomfort the comfortable. And I expect she did that with Kirby as she did with me, as she did with almost everybody else that she, that she worked with. You, it was always interesting to work with Marge. It was sometimes exciting, and it was sometimes uncomfortable. <laughs> she had a great relationship with students. She really, really did. Um, I think that's what made her work in uh, writing in the teaching of writing so successful that um, the, she became and helped some of the rest of us to become uh, partners with the students in, in the writing process and in, in the writing development. Uh, you're not standing up at the front of the class, you know, telling them the rules or anything like that. You are engaged with them in, in a process and the students that I knew that uh, in that way, in her relationship to Marge, well, they almost idolized her. Yeah. Um, interest that she had, and still has, in uh, IT uh, manifested itself very early. Uh, I, that's not something that you can say that's an accomplishment. But it is actually a very important accomplishment. Many of us were just excited about having email. And Mar Marge was planning com computer classrooms and interactive courses and, and things like that that now are, are part and parcel of Mercy University. Energetic, I've used that word several times. I would use it again, energetic, um, forceful. Um, Restless, um, courageous. I don't think I've said this to him, but I would say this to him that I, I would like to take credit for getting her here. 
credit or responsibility or blame, <laughs> whatever word one chooses to use, I really brought more cheer and I'm very proud that I did. What a great opportunity to talk about Marge and her retirement. Let me start by saying I was in the Department of English in the Liberal Arts when Marge was hired. And here, here she came, perky, energetic, creative. She started messing with the department. She had ideas for the department. And they were outside the box, outside our tradition. But Marge was lurable. And the administration lured Marge to its camp. And she went willingly. And I thought, that's good. But then I began to hear this business of a new library. And what was wrong with the old library? Had no books, had no technology, had no... But no, no. Marge wanted it. And the bricks were being laid. And at the dedication, there she was. And who should pick her up next? Who should lure her next? But the upstart on campus, the engineering school. And the engineering school didn't know Marge. However, I had hope. The engineering school has machines and metal things, and they retool. And I thought, they may retool this woman. She's dangerous. But no, what did I begin to hear? I began to hear about a technical writing program. Now, what is a technical writing program? All writing is technical. But Marge, no. This dangerous woman, she set up a technical writing program, which is now nationally known. I thought, it's hopeless. It's ho and now, we're going to set her free in the world. She's going to be loose in the world, people. Think about the world now. Iran. Iran is building a nuke. North Korea already has a nuke. And we are setting this woman free. Now, attention. I have discovered that there are two options of what we can do with her. The first option is we can send her over there and let her mess with them a while. Or the second option is to keep her close and watch her. Yes. And I have the solution. I pick the second option. And here it is. The second option would be to let her go free. And how do we watch her? I have designated her as a person of interest. And I have put her on the no-fly list. I have friends. I have connections. She is on the no-fly list. We can watch her and stop her. Thank you very much. Rainy, in one word or less, describe Dr. Marge Davis. Black belt. Okay. You know, this is not fair. When she sets us up so we can have a little, I was going to have a little note cards and all this kind of stuff, but now she wants one word or less, I guess she's going to put them all together. One word or less, describe Dr. Marge Davis. Inspiring. Marge is generous. She's generous with her time, with herself, with her talents. Assertive. Okay, Stephen. Dr. Marge Davis, in one word or less, describe her. Vicious. Dynamite. Okay. Uh, in one word or less, describe Dr. Marge Davis. Awesome. Spicy. Oh. <laughs> Next word. <laughs> Steel magnolia, which is one word if you don't put a space in between the two of them. Piece of work. Serious. Organized. 
feisty. SNJ, in one word, describe Dr. Marge Davis. Marge, you're smart. I may describe Dr. Davis and translate it from my language to English. Um, we would describe her in my hometown as someone who does not eat soap. And so by that, we mean someone who does not take any BS. Crazy. Frightening. Great. Arch Davis. Focused. Awesome. Intense. Cute and smart. Persistent. I think Marge should update her ad in Soldier of Fortune magazine. I really like Peggy's idea of the Bibb County Board of Education. Take a nap. Dang, that's a long time. Um, uh, she should be my roommate. Nothing. Take a road trip, enjoy the country. You cannot stop what you're doing. You should keep working. And then you should be at our faculty meeting to give us clear statement, clear solution for us, period. I want her to write her book about the history of, uh, of, of, of the discipline, technical communication. She was supposed to have, have done that uh, uh, last year and uh, cancer got in the way. She really needs to do that. Ooh, I think she deserves a break. I think she needs to go back and update her third degree black belt in karate. Go swim with the dolphins. Skydiving. Go to Disney World. Ah! Oh. <laughs> take a break. I think Martin should take maybe two or three days and solve some big problem for the world and then come back and help us at Mercer. Chill. She should run for mayor of Roberta. Party at Mardi Gras. Mix more. Buy a tiger. Lots of golf. Oh. <laughs> I think she should go hide. That would be a wonderful thing to do. Get away from all the craziness that is known as Bibb County and or Mercer. I hope she stays as far away from the administration building as possible. Uh, she's the best professor I ever had.